Hey everybody, I just got home from my post office box and I picked up this which is happy mail from my friend Miranda at Alkali Creek Arts and I just realized that like you can really tell how dirty my nails are from an art experiment I did this weekend that I'm not going to tell you about because I don't want to spoil a surprise. But we're going to open this quick. Yeah. Um... Okay, quick might have been not the right word to use. We're going to open this. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at the kitty! Okay, so this is technically, I think, a pill case. So Miranda got one of these and is going to use it as a travel palette with three little colors. And I think that's such a great idea. Um, yeah. And she said she was going to buy me one because I'm on a no buy. Oh, Miranda, you're like an angel, but look at this kitty. <laughs> I am so excited to put paint in this. Um, and somebody in Miranda's comments said that it would be cool to make this into a necklace. Um, and I think instead of that, it might be more fun to like, I wonder if I could make it into a bracelet. Hmm. Ooh, or, okay, I have an idea. What if I attach it to a binder clip? Like if I used epoxy sculpt? And I could attach it to a binder clip and then I could just go clump and clip it onto my sketchbook or like whatever I'm using to paint when I'm traveling. That is like such a fun idea. I'm going to do that. Okay, we're going to do that. So here I am fiddling around with the pill case and the binder clip to see how I want to attach the binder clip because... If it's hanging funny, like if it, it's going to hang over the lip, it's going to interfere with how I open and close the case and how it'll attach to my sketchbook and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm just filling around for a while to see where I want to put it before I permanently attach it. And then I just get out my epoxy sculpt and mix together parts A and B and separate a little blob that I think is going to be big enough to attach the binder clip and then I just smush it on there like it wasn't really um, super technical <laughs> um, but I do want to make sure that it gets really good connection there's a pretty nice texture on the back of this pill box so it'll actually make a really good solid connection I think and uh, then it's just a matter of smushing it down really well, like over and over again. And I swear this is the last time I'm apologizing for it, but like my nails are really thrashed and it makes me sad to see them. They're better now, but um, <laughs> they were very stained in this. And uh, I guess when you do videos and like people are going to be looking at your uh, hands a lot, maybe when you're going to play with dye, you should use gloves, huh? So then I just have this other little blob of epoxy sculpt and I am using it to make a little face. And I am not going, I mean obviously this is just for me and it's for fun, so I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into making this a extremely accurate representation of a little kitty face. But I wanted something on the back just for fun cause, cause guys I, I like fun. I, I just do. I like fun things, so there you go. So when I was recording this and like playing back through it, I was like, gosh, I really didn't do much art considering this is like an art video. And then I was like, oh wait, I, I actually did sculpt this cute little kitty face too. So I, I felt a little bit redeemed. I was a little bit worried. Like I was like, wow, I just kind of did this one little painting and it's really no big deal. But I don't know. I had a lot of fun making this video, so. <laughs> uh, and here I am just going with like a little kind of ball tool, making little eyes. Um, and yeah, all of my cats look like rabbits until they get to a certain point when they stop looking like rabbits. 
This one looks very rabbity right here. I want to also take this opportunity to chat about how awful this winter has been. <laughs> um, I managed to stay pretty upbeat, but I do have like pretty um, bad like seasonal depression sometimes and like who the last few weeks have really been brutal and it's just snowing all the time and it's rough and yeah I appreciate you guys being patient with me as I you know try to deal with the end of winter and get behind on my recording schedule and etc and also then oh look I found a cat here while I was you know making these ears yeah there we go okay um but yeah, I appreciate your patience as I try to, like, you know, deal with this never-ending winter of endless snow. Um, so here I'm making kitty ears. And again, just really rough kitty ears. Um, and I, like, super overestimated how much um, of sculpting material I was going to need to make this tiny cat face. Because I ended up with a whole bunch of extra and I ended up doing other stuff with it that I'm not going to tell you about because it's going to show up in another video. But I did try to smooth things down like to the point where it wasn't going to bug me to see it, you know, <laughs> like it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to look like it's not going to fall apart. Uh, yeah. And I also like, as I'm going through this, I am definitely going through and making sure that the edges of that little disc that's going to hold my binder clip on are patted down really well because I do not want that getting pulled up. Okay, so it is the next day and here's the little seal that I put on there to hold the binder clip on this really adorable little pillowcase palette. And this is epoxy sculpt and it is very solidly on there. So can see that it's not lifting up at all which is exciting and there's a cute little kitty's face Deep, boop, boop. Oof. yeah my nails are gross and I'm sorry but um I swear it's not dirt it's actually just stained that way right now <laughs> um so yeah um I played around with some colors last night because I want to put three different colors in here and I was thinking I wanted to do like a dark purple and a cascade green and a pink uh and i changed my mind after doing these cool little mixy study beasties here so i think i'm gonna do cascade green and this is quinacridone coral and then this teal because they mix together to make this really cool grayish brown um or that that's these two these two mix together to make a grayish brown and then the pink and the teal make make this really cool separating bluey color yeah um yeah anyways so i think we're gonna do that let's do that let's do that i am not gonna fill this up completely because these are pretty honk and big um ah uh, Space thingies. Oh my goodness. Anyways, there's really big spaces in here, and so I'm not going to fill it up completely. These are all Daniel Smith paints, by the way. And if you can see, it is lovely and sunny out right now um i unfortunately have to do my day job until it won't be sunny out anymore but i wanted to get this recorded and pretend that i'm gonna go outside and paint today i'm not but but i can pretend right and it's i mean supposed to be like 36 degrees out so it's supposed to be above freezing so i could go outside and paint today anyways i really like the idea of just having these three strange colors in my palette and i'm really looking forward to getting the chance to try them out actually outside so 
So yeah, those are the three paints I put in there. Um, and this whole little scene right here is making me very happy. Look how pretty that is in the sun. Um, so I'm going to wait for those to set a little bit. I do like painting with wet paints, but obviously that's not really a great option when you're going to be traveling a lot with it. So I'd rather not with the wet paints when I travel. Unless it's gouache, because uh, that's a little bit different. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to let this sit. It looks kind of like a sad clown face right now. Morp, morp. <laughs> okay, all right, um, moving on. So let's talk for a minute about how Minnesotans deal with it when we have this much snow, which you can see there is a lot of it. So sometimes in the winter, we just close off different exits and entrances to buildings like this is like, this stair is not going to be used. It's covered in snow. Please use a different. And then in more extreme situations, people just brick over their doors and then burst out like the Kool-Aid man once spring hits. Just thought you guys might want to know how uh, things work here in Minnesota, in case you've never visited. <laughs> So I went out with my new paint kit and that is me there looking a little bit like a grape, which is fine. Um, a part of the survival of winter is eating carbs. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, I am actually like trying to work on losing weight again. I've actually lost a lot, so it's awesome and you should say lots of awesome positive things about how I'm working on my health and how far I've come in the comments because you are my very supportive and lovely people. So moving on from that, I am painting in a location that I was painting in at about this time last year. And oh my goodness, can we just for a minute talk about how absolutely awful this water brush was that I brought with me. It just leaked everywhere anytime I tried to squeeze water out of it. It was awful. I can't remember if I got this from Jerry's or if I got it from Amazon. Yeah, I um, I don't know that I'm going to be using it again. But so I am working on this with only the three colors that I put in my little pill case palette. And I really had so much fun. So here I am mixing that gray. And I've never heard anybody tell me this, but like if you're trying to mix a neutral tone from two different vibrant colors, the best way to tell that you're getting there. Oh, that's a happy sigh on my part. I was in such a good mood to be out in the sun. So the best way that you can tell that you're getting there is like when you're swishing those two colors together, the places where the paint's really thin on your palette, you can kind of see the tone of it better, I think. Like, if it's a little bit more red or a little bit more green, it's easier to see where the paint is the thinnest. And that's even more easy when you're not using a gray palette like I was here. But but I just wanted to say that because I, I don't know, like, it's something that I've figured out over time. And I don't know that I've ever heard anybody give me a, you know, a tip on that before. Uh, and you can hear the train in the background, and I decided to just let the, uh, sounds of nature- Look at how much water just came out of that pen! Oh, what a piece of garbage. Anyways, just let the sounds of nature and random sounds happen in the background, because I kind of like that. Um, so yeah, I am painting in a place that I was painting almost exactly a year ago, and I'll show you guys what I painted last year when I was here. It's just in a local park, and this time last year, the snow was basically all gone. It was so, like, the difference is so intense from year to year, and it's, as much as it irritates me, I do love the seasonal changes in Minnesota. It's pretty. And here is a shot of the marker cap that I dropped into the snow that I had to clump through, like, the knee-deep snow to get that stupid marker cap. From the stupid marker thing that I don't even like. And here I am making grumpy faces about it. And also making grumpy faces because my <laughs> my transition lenses are super dark in the snow. 
and I can't see anything. Like when I'm trying to see screens, I'm like, I, I am absolutely not able to. But I did pick up the marker cap because you don't leave litter. That's just not a thing you should do. And here's just some really pretty. Um, my favorite thing about the winter is shadows on the snow. Like, look at how cool they are. They're so cool. I love shadows on the snow. And then I found this little heart-shaped knot in a tree, and there it is, so cute! And then I found this cool, um, I want to say it's a birch, but I think it might be an aspen. I always forget how to tell the difference, I'm really bad at this. But I just love the orangey look against the bluey snow. And here's some oh, shadows falling across a hillside with like the last of last year's orange leaves gorgeous and here I am painting on my couch uh, if you guys follow creating cute arts channel <laughs> she uh, also had a video in which she painted on her couch with her hubby and I was just like you know I'm doing that too I'm painting on my couch with my cats I'm relaxing this winter has been rough as I say this right now, it is snowing again. We have another storm moving in and it's supposed to be like, you know how storms are if you've dealt with snow. It's like somewhere between four and 20 inches we're going to get. Like, I don't even, I guess I just don't even. So the pen that you're seeing me using is a refillable pen with uh, J. Urbane's Grease Nuage, which I'm sure you would say that better if you spoke French, but I don't. So I'm saying it horribly. Anyways, that cool gray is one of my favorite colors, but it is not waterproof and I doubt it is light proof. Um, yeah, but I love using it. And the pen I'm using now is a Pentel pocket brush. So it is pigment ink and it is waterproof and I assume light fast, but it's not something I worry about with that pen. Mostly with that pen, I worry about it being Waterproof, because sometimes I like to paint over what I paint with that pen. And if you haven't tried a Pentel pocket brush, like, seriously, I love it. It's like my favorite thing to draw with. The lines you can get are so varied. Like, you can get down to just like a pinprick thin line that you can barely see. And then you can have big chunky lines like these are. And yeah, gorgeous. I highly recommend and they're very durable too. I've been using this one for a long time and it is nowhere near looking um, beat up. And then you can make it refillable. It does come with cartridges um, and you can like attach a converter and you know just put your own ink on there. I just have so many refills for it still that I don't need to I don't need to worry about it yet. Um, I think I found some of them on clearance at Michael's a few years ago so and here I am putting little sticks in the foreground with the light gray ink again. I really love how that teal, um, just so you know, I am pointing with my cursor right now, which I realize you can't see because you're watching a video later. But I love all those little bits of teal that showed up in the snow shadows in the water. And I actually am really happy with how this turned out overall. Um, and here it is comparing it to what I painted in the same spot last year. As you can see, there is no snow in the last year. Uh, and last year was March 16th, and this year was March 3rd. And this is my trunk, and it's full of giant plastic bones. And if you have an idea of what I might make with them, drop me a note in the comments, and I will see you guys next week.